Okay, so um, hello, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I've had a few requests from the last video about how to uh, set a Nano VNA up from just from basics. So if you're opening it, some people have said that they feel clueless about how to just get it up and running. So um, it, it's really not difficult, but it, it is a little bit tricky um, the first time you do it. So I'm hopefully going to uh, run maybe one or two videos uh, into this. Another uh, thing as well is that this is going to be just um, the first type of uh, set up. Um, it's going to allow you to test um, lots of different things. Um, however, it is going to leave out um, a very important second part um, of uh, testing any kind of device, which is um, something I'm going to leave to another video. Uh, there were some comments that I got saying that you're not testing the um, the balance correctly, um, and there is a half truth to that. Um, so uh, just uh, basically what I'm going to do is show you how to set a nano VNA up um, and also try to explain what you're actually measuring with all the different things, because it, it's a wonderful device. It can do lots of different things. Um, the, the most basic thing that you can do is called um, measuring a uh, return loss or reflection. So um, when you're measuring things like uh, SWR, uh, things like that, um, it's, it's, using, um, it's using something called a reflection coefficient. Um, and that's exactly what you're measuring. And it's actually a complex number. Complex doesn't mean it's really sophisticated. It just means it's complex in terms of it's actually representing two different values. It's representing uh, a magnitude, which is kind of a size, and it's also re uh, representing a phase. Um, and I'm not going to go into that just yet because you don't need to know that. We're going to be dealing in absolute values of return loss. So um, very, very simply, um, return loss is just measuring how much energy is being returned, let's say, from an antenna. So let's say you're, you know, you want to measure how good an antenna is. You want a maximum amount of energy kind of going out compared to a minimum amount of energy being reflected. OK, so if you put, say, one watt out to the antenna and you get 0.0001 watts back, that's really fantastic because it means that most of the energy is being is is actually uh, being uh, sent to the radiator part of the antenna and it's not being returned. Okay, so that is return loss and that really determines that. In fact, it doesn't really determine. It does determine exactly what the SWR is. Okay, it's just a different way of expressing it. So we want to get a nice low value for that. Now, the first thing that you have to do is something called calibration, all right? Um, now, again, some of you people out there that are going to be a lot more experienced are going to start shouting at me and going to say, yes, but, you know, that's that's only half the story because we need to talk about um, uh, the complex transmission coefficient. You're not wrong. That is true. But um, I want to keep it simple for now, OK? Um, just very briefly, the uh, transmission coefficient doesn't just met well, it doesn't measure the amount of energy being uh, reflected compared to the amount of energy being sent out. Well, it does. It measures the amount of energy being tr passed through the device compared to how much is actually being sent to the device. OK, but we're not going to do that right now. And that does require two additional stages of calibration. So. Um, what I have here is a calibration kit. You're going to have to buy one of these things. This is a very, very cheap calibration kit. OK. Um, and, you know, for most purposes, these are absolutely flat fine, unless you're doing something like diplexes or something a lot more sophisticated. Uh, these are these are great. Um, one is 50 ohms. Um, the other one is a short circuit. The other one is an open circuit. And we're going to need those things right now. Um, and just to show you that this is um, this is 50 ohms. I'm going to uh, actually measure it for you so you can see. So I'm going to turn on the device over here. OK, we're set up to measure um, ohmic resistance. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this 50 ohm alleged load over here. In fact, I'm going to pop it here. So I'm going to place one thing over here like this. I'm going to place the other one over here and hopefully that should be about 50 ohms. Whoops. Oh, yes, about 51 and a half ohms. So, so for the purpose of this, this is absolutely fine. Um, a more expensive calibration kit will will be better. But um, this is apps again, absolutely fine for now. Right. Let's move on.
Okay, so let's see what we have. So we've got the nano VNA over here. You need to have one of these um, SMA uh, cables over here. So the um, connector on each side, or at least on my one, is uh, two SMA females. So what you really need to have is um, an SMA male um, to SMA male. And I've just you just need to plug that into channel zero. Don't worry about channel one for now, okay? We're, again, we're only measuring things like for SWR, return loss, you only need to worry about channel zero. Okay, then what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn it on. Now you get this uh, screen, okay. Now, what you do is that you click anywhere on the screen just once. And what you do is that you click on uh, where it says calibrate. I hope you can see that over here. It says calibrate, all right? If it doesn't, if it's in your kind of somewhere else, like another menu, just click back at the bottom, all right, enough times until you can see calibrate over here, okay? Click it once, and then you should be directed to this menu over here. So you've got um, calibrate, power auto, save, all of these different things. So click calibrate again. And now we've got uh, all these different calibration options, open, short, load, isolation, through, and e-delay, okay? So we're only going to concern ourselves with these first three things. You only need to calibrate three things in order for SWR determination, okay? And things like return loss. So what we're going to do, we're going to do an open calibration first. Now you could just click open and it will calibrate to open because after all this is an open load. All right, that's absolutely fine. If you want to be a little bit more um, pedantic, you can take your open load, which is this one over here, and um, just screw it in. And of course it doesn't go in because you need um, one of these things as well, which is an SMA female to SMA female. All right, so it looks like that at both ends. SMA female to SMA female. And what we're going to do is I'm going to plug this one in over here. Okay. And then we're going to plug in the open load like that. And then we're going to click open. Okay, just click it once and see what happens. Done. Next thing we're going to do is asking us for the short. So what we'll do, we'll just unplug it like that. Whoops. And then we'll put the short circuit in. Now the short circuit one is this one. So the short circuit is just the center pin and the outer part is all made of metal, all right? So it's literally the center is just short to the outside. So you just plug that in there like that and click short once. And can you see that it's changed to a tick? That means it's happy it's got that. For some reason it's got hap it's got tick on the load. It must have saved it from before, but we're going to do that again. So for the load, we're just going to undo that and we're going to put the 50 ohm load um, connector on, which is this one. So do you remember at the beginning, this is the one that we, we measured as being 51 and a half ohms. So we're going to screw this one in. And we're basically telling the nano VNA that this is 50 ohms. Okay, so we're going to click load. Done. Then once that's done, you just click the done button over here on this one once. And then you click save zero. And what that means is that every time you're going to turn the the uh, device on and off. The save zero calibration is going to be loaded. All right. Now, the next thing that you do, because your your device might look very different to this. Okay, don't worry. Just click anywhere on the screen once. Click back, and then go to display. All right, and then click trace. And what I want you to do is turn off everything. So. You know, you've got a, a purple one, click it once, it's gone. The green one, click it once. Now, if you click any of the traces once, like this, can you see it's not going to turn them off? It's just going to, um, I really hope you can see that. Okay, let me see if I can, hope that's visible. Um, I do apologize if it's a bit harder to see. Um, maybe if I... See that? Ah, oh, maybe that's better. Okay, I think that might be a bit better. Sorry, I didn't do that before. <laughs> so, um, if you click on say trace zero, trace one, trace two, um, it just uh, turns the tick on for each one, and that just means that that particular trace is activated. 
All right. If you want to turn the trace off, just click it once and then click it again. Gone. The blue one activated off. The yellow one off. So now we've got absolutely no trace whatsoever. Okay. So again, click somewhere and just click the trace zero once. So trace zero is on. Don't worry about what trace zero means just yet. Now click back. Now what we're going to do is that a very important step is that can you see we've got two formats here? It says format S11 reflected and format S21 through. That just means that if we're measuring something of S21, and I'm going to do another video hopefully on what that means, don't worry, it is more complicated than what we're doing now, then that basically sets up what the um, display will be for, for, for S21, but don't worry about that. S format S11 reflected, click that once, and we're just going to click resistance. It's already selected, click it once. So you can see, if you, if you click one of the other ones, it's just going to appear a little tick next to it like that. Okay. Um, so we're going to click resistance and then we're going to click back. All right. And now just click somewhere in the screen. Okay. Now what this is doing is that it's measuring the resistance of the thing of this thing that we connected over here. Okay. And you can see it looks like it's about 50 ohms and you can click and you can drag it wherever you want. All right. And when you drag it, all that's doing is that it's measuring that resistance value across the entire range of whatever you've selected. And I'm going to go through that right now. At the moment, it's going from 10 megahertz to 30 megahertz. All right. Um, but the first thing to do, just to make it a little bit easier, we'd, let's say we want to change the scale over here. Because at the moment, it's going 100 all the way to 800. So you just click somewhere. All right. And then if you click scale like that, just click it once and then click it again over here, scaled per division, and we can select the division. So before it was, you can see the division is going up in hundreds. That is confirmed, by the way, by this little number over here. So it's got S11, all right, ignore that for now, R, which means resistive, resistance, 100 stroke 50 point, and that part is really hovering. So the second number, that number that's hovering, is what the actual value is. The first number is what the divisions are over here. So let's say that, well, I mean, this is going up in hundreds of divisions. Let's say we want to change that to division of 50. So we'll click somewhere on the screen, then we'll click scale. And if we click 50, like that, enter, watch what happens. Isn't that nicer? Now it's going up in 50s, and it's confirmed by the scale over here. It's going up in 50s, all right? So you've got 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, etc., etc. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you how to set the, um, the span. That's very important. So going from 10 megahertz to 30 megahertz. So if you click somewhere, you need to go back um, and then uh, click back again. And what you do, you click stimulus. The stimulus is all about telling the nano VNA what frequency range are you actually interested in. So let's click stimulus. Now you can do this a number of ways. You can define a start frequency, or you can define a stop free and a stop frequency, or you can just pick a center frequency and what the span is going to be. So the span will be the total width between the uh, the first and the last frequency. All right. So, uh, so for this, what I would do is just click 10 megahertz, 10 M. Okay. And then the stop frequency is going to be 30 megahertz like that. And then we're going from 10 to 30. Obviously you can change that as well. Very important. Once you've done that, you do need to recalibrate it. If the start and the stop frequency are different. All right. Um, because you need to tell the nano VNA, um, where the calibration is valid from. If you just, uh, you know, uh, enter a higher value, it doesn't really know what 50 ohms looks like, you know, at 50 megahertz or 60 megahertz. So that's very important. Okay. Um, so now what you can do is that we've got a lovely description of this little uh, um, uh, termination, this 50 ohm termination, going from all the way from 10 megahertz, which is 50 ohms, and it goes all the way up to um, 20, uh, 30 megahertz, and it seems to be 50 ohms going all the way across. All right. So that's 
uh, point number one that I hope is clear. Now, um, let's see. Obviously, the nano VNA can do a lot more than just uh, analyze resistance. Um, let's uh, click and let's go back. Whoops, let's go back and click display and click trace. Now, let's say that we're actually interested in uh, another trace. We're interested in something else. So let's just click trace one. Okay, go back and let's click format. Okay, now whatever we select over here, it's going to be talking about this new blue trace. Why? Because that's what we have selected. Can you see this little tick over here? So that means that any uh, adjustments that we make to the scale or to anything is going to be only talking, it's only going to be relevant to trace one. All right, so let's go back and let's click format S11. And now we can select something else. So let's say we want to know what the reactance is. Click reactance, already selected. Okay, reactance. Now the reactance is something a little bit more complex. Um, no pun intended for those who are more advanced. Um, but uh, the reactance is a little bit more, more complex. Um, for a resistor, you should expect the reactance to be zero. Okay, again, on another video, I might go into more detail on, on what reactance is. Um, but reactance is basically saying, is there any kind of shift between the um, between the voltage and the current waveforms uh, across the device? So for an inductor, um, there would be a voltage, um, uh, uh, well, for, a, for an inductor or for, or for a capacitor, um, they are reactive components. So there's going to be a voltage lag or there's going to be a voltage lead compared to the current. Okay, In the resistor, there shouldn't be anything like that at all. So we should expect zero. And lo and behold, what we can see right at the bottom, this blue line, um, is actually zero. It's a little bit hard to see because it's right at the bottom. Can you see here what's the scale? It's 25 ohms. So if we click somewhere, now let's go back and let's click scale and let's say that we want the scale to be um, 50 ohms to make that the same scale as the resistance now this is going up in 50 ohms okay so for the reference position what you can do um, is that if you want to move this zero center line up we can move it up by however many units we like so let's say we'd like to move it because it's a bit hard to see over here so let's say we want to move it up say one two three four so we want the zero line appearing where 200 ohms is, four divisions up. Just click somewhere, click reference position, click four, click enter, and boom, look at that. Isn't that lovely? So we've got the zero reactance reference roughly in the center like that. So if the component is becoming a little bit more reactive, um, it's going to go above that line. If it's becoming a little bit capacitive, it's going to go below that line. So inductive, inductively capacitive on the top, capacitively reactive on the bottom. Um, but again, for a resistor, we expect that to be zero. So th this is what you should expect when you're calibrating uh, your device. Now, let's say that we want to see, well, what's the value of the resistance? Well, the resistance tells you, it actually tells you over here. So it's really nice. We've got the resistance and we've got the reactance. See, the reactance is really small. It's not zero, but it's very, very small. Now, if we want to just see what the scale is for the um, resistance, all we have to do we don't have to go and click somewhere, go back, go into trace and then click zero. We could do that, but there's something else we could do. So let's just go <laughs> click trace one. There's something a lot easier we could do. You can just click on it. Watch this. And did you see how that scale changed? So it changed from reactance. I'm going to click on the reactance curve now, the reactance marker. And there's our reactance scale that we've set up. So it goes from zero. So zero is centered in 50 ohm increments, which is um, given over here like that. Right. Um, and um, then um, and, and also we set a reference position of four, which means zero would normally be at the bottom. But we've moved it up one, two, three, four. So we've moved it up over here. And if we want to just go back to the resistance scale, I'm just going to click that once and see what happens. And there we go. Isn't that lovely? So we go from and another thing we could do, we could set that 50 ohm um, marker, we could move that up a couple of units as well if we wanted. So instead of moving it, say here, let's say we move it, want to move up one, two spaces. Um, so let's go into um, scale reference two. Whoops, not twenty-two. Thank you. Just two, and it's moved it up by two lines. So um, that's really nice. And now we've got um, fifty ohms over here, which is what we expect for a resistor. 
um, and we've got our reactance curve, which is zero, which is what we expect over here, like that. So I'm actually going to move that reference position down by one. Okay, so I'm going to set it back. If I set it to zero again, so that's the normal scale like that. So zero, fifty, one hundred, one hundred fifty, two hundred. Let's move it up just by one. So I'm going to select one, select enter. And there we go, we've moved it up by one. Now let's say that I just, you know, I'm just learning, and I think by the way, just as you're learning how to use a nano VNA, this is actually a really good thing just to practice doing um, and get comfortable with it. So try plugging in different components, different resistance values, different things, and just see, you know, how they resist, how does the resistance and reactance change across the whole spectrum. But what you want to do now is that you want to learn to save what you've done. So when I turn this off, it's going to come on again, just like that. Very easy to do. All you do, you click somewhere, you go back, you go back, you click calibrate. Now I know you're going to say, well, we've done that already. We have. We're not going to recalibrate it. But if you click calibrate once, now instead of clicking calibrate again, what you can do is that you click save and click save zero. Now you can save to any one of these channels. The difference is, is that when you click to save zero, that's going to be the default mode when you turn it on and it's always going to remember that. So let's try that. Let's click save zero. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it off and then I'm going to turn it on again and hopefully exactly the same screen is going to be displayed. Right now, obviously it's not going to work because it never does when I actually do it, but <laughs> let's have a go. So we've turned it off. Now let's turn it on. Ah, amazing, it works. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> so I can turn that off as many times as I want, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, I can go out to a field. I can plug in a new component, go around to someone else's house, and it's all working. Remember, this is still plugged into that 50 ohm device over here. OK. Now, let's say that we want to try and test a different component. So what I'm going to do is I've got this thing over here, you can see that. It's actually another 50 ohm load, but it's from a different calibration kit. It's meant to be a little bit, I think it, I don't know if it's any better, but the reason I bought it was because it comes with two identical ones. And for the next calibration, you'd need two uh, 50 ohm loads. So let's just see the difference between this one and this one. Now what I could do, I could just be a bit sloppy, unplug it and plug this in, that's fine. Or what I could do, I could freeze this screen okay by clicking pause sweep very clever thing watch pause sweep and now you can click here and now when i unplug this little thing over here unplug it i've unplugged it so this is actually an open circuit now um it doesn't change it free it holds that thing so i'm going to now plug this one in and it's nice because it means that you can you can very easily see the difference. So I've plugged this in and now I'm going to unfreeze it and let's see what the difference is. So three, two, one, and I'm going to uh, click resume sweep after three. One, two, three. And it's actually identical, <laughs> which uh, which is good. So that's the, the basic form of calibration and setting your nano VNA up. Now, let's say that you want to see what the uh, SWR is. OK, so if you click somewhere, click anywhere, um, let's go to display and let's click trace. Um, now, you could obviously turn these traces off, but we're building this up and it's supposed to be instructional. So let's add another trace, trace two. And we don't know. It looks like it's put Smith plot over here, which we don't want. So we're going to go back and remember this is selected now. If we wanted to change trace one, we would select that. If we wanted to change trace zero, we would select that. But we're going to change trace two. So we selected trace two. Um, we're going to go back um, and we're going to click format S11 because remember we're not doing S21 through just yet. We're doing S11. And um, by the way, if we were to, whoops, sorry, if we were to select an S21, okay, let's say we put a delay or something like that, this obviously is erroneous, um, but it's going to put that S21 delay on channel trace three, okay, which is incorrect. We want 
we want channel uh, trace two, sorry, not trace three, trace two to be, which is the ch third trace really, uh, because it starts at zero, zero, one, two. And we wanna go back and we wanna select, um, let's say we wanna select uh, SWR, okay? Um, if we selected resistance, uh, I know it looks like it's a different different resistance to the other one but remember that's because the scale has been reset okay so uh, let's go let's check that we are selected trace two oh, turn trace two off trace two on trace one selected trace two selected let's go back and uh, instruct trace two to be just third trace to be swr okay swr is selected and can you see what it's done automatically it says again i'm going to change the reference to move the zero position up by one unit just to make it a bit easier for you to see so you go to scale reference position one enter now we can see that the one line swr 1.0 is over here okay and we can see it's got an swr of one which is perfect really across the whole spectrum and the division is going up in 0.25 can you see that so one 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0.75, um, and that's confirmed by over here, all right? It says 250 milli, which means um, a quarter of a thousand. Um, no, it doesn't. It means a quarter of one. <laughs> 250 divided by thousand, okay, which is 0 0.25. 0 0.25 increments going all the way up to the top, which is a nice kind of display for SWR. Um, and uh, and it's one, one to one across the whole thing. So basically, if you were to plug in uh, a transmitter to a 50 ohm load, a perfect 50 ohm load, obviously you would expect the SWR to be one. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with impedance matching with any antenna. We, you know, we're always trying to get the impedance to 50 ohms um, to match the characteristic impedance of a transmission line. When we do that, we get an SWR of one to one. Okay, so that in essence, um, should get you going with and with uh, with basic antennas. Um, what I'm going to do is just show you a third trace, which is the return loss. Now, do you remember what I said at the beginning? This really measures something called reflection coefficient, and from that it deduces everything else. Um, well, if if we have an SWR, at least let's say you know the antenna appears to be perfect, um, we would expect that whatever energy we send out to the antenna nothing at all is coming back all right so we would expect an extremely low value of return loss so let's go back let's click trace and let's set up a third trace uh, format oh it's already done it log magnitude all right okay um and what we can see is that these this is in measure this is a log scale measured in decibels so when it says minus 60 this is like you know a millionth of the value of one it's really really small um and it's uh it um it, it's not even there because it's um it's it's close as close to zero as possible so it's actually even less than the minus 60. so you know i'm not going to worry about the log magnitude for now so let's practice turning off a trace um but that that should that should be enough and then obviously what we would want to do is go back um, and we would want to go to calibrate, save, zero, save zero. So when we turn this off and turn it on again, you have a lovely um, uh, display over here. And if you click the SWR, you'll be able to see exactly what your SWR is. So I, again, for a first video, I hope this was okay in terms of just getting you um, started. Now, the criticism I had from some people saying that, yeah, but hold on, you're not testing the actual thing. I hope you can see now, this is not a complete test because obviously, if you try transmitting into a 50 ohm load, you're not gonna make very many contacts. <laughs> even though the SWR is one-to-one -one and it's perfect. So um, hopefully in another video, what we're going to do is look at something called S21. And in S21, you remember what we said before in that, in that um, display, you know we have a former S21 and a whole load of things. That's what that little thing will help us um, uh, uh, do. Um, so I hope that's, um, that's okay for now. Um, if you did want to be a little bit more advanced, you could go into Trace and set up a, um, oh, look what's happened. We've got, um, we've got a, um, 
S113 here, it's actually at minus 50 decibels, which is incredibly small. I mean, I think this is approaching the limits of the device anyway, but the point is, is that it's very small. But let's go back and set up a, um, a Smith chart. Okay, now a Smith chart over here um, shows the resistance and the reactance in one graph. And it's also calibrated to 50 ohms and zero reactance. So when it's in the center like this across all the frequencies, it means you've got a perfect match. But anyway, anyway I'm going to turn that off for now because that's a, a little bit more um, sophisticated. Um, so, so that should keep you going. Um, in a future video, what I'd like to do is show and demonstrate what S21 does. And also just to go into S11 a little bit more, maybe with some diagrams and things. But again, just um, just as a basic um, kind of tool, um, this will allow you to give you your resistance, your reactance and your SWR. So I hope that you like that. And um, I hope that um, has allowed some of you to set up the, the Nano VNA um, from nothing. Uh, feel free to leave any, any remarks or if you want me to um, produce anything else that might be of assistance or help, um, I would be, uh, be a pleasure.